Hello, I'm Sister Barbara Campbell, a Sister of St. Joseph. On behalf of the Diocese of Wheeling, Charleston, the Sisters of St. Joseph, and the St. John's Home for Children, I would like to welcome you to our historic presentation of this storied home. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, Let the children come to me, and do not prevent them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. We of the St. John's home are humbled and inspired that we have been blessed by our Lord with the opportunity to have the children and their families come to us for 150 years. We hope to continue to serve them for centuries to come. As a former resident of the home, I hope that you enjoy this journey of our last 150 years. Our story begins in 1853. Bishop Richard V. Whalen, first bishop of the Diocese of Wheeling, Virginia, invited the Sisters of St. Joseph to come from St. Louis to Wheeling and staffed the newly established Wheeling Hospital, located at 110 15th Street. The hospital also served as a residence for the sisters. Bishop Whalen brought three orphan girls to the sisters for care. With this small step began the 150-year history of the St. Vincent's and St. John's home. Little did Bishop Whalen realize what a momentous undertaking this would become. By 1856, the hospital had outgrown the original site and the number of orphan girls had increased. On February 21st, the institution moved to North Wheeling and reincorporated as Wheeling Hospital and Orphan Asylum for Young Girls. During the Civil War in July of 1864, the orphans had to be moved to a temporary home on Wheeling Island so that wounded soldiers could occupy their space at the hospital. In August 1887, Bishop John Kane established the St. John's Home for Boys in a small dwelling on 13th Street. Here the sisters' desire to provide care for orphan boys was at last realized. In the summer of 1896, Mary Jane Carney purchased the Craycraft property in Elm Grove and donated it to the diocese for use as an orphan's home. When renovated and in addition to the existing building had been completed, the boys were moved from 13th Street to 141 Key Avenue, the present location. Shortly before acquisition of the Key Avenue property, a bequest from Mr. John Bruce for the support of orphan children enabled the diocese to purchase additional property on Marshall Avenue at the end of Key Avenue. Following the necessary alterations and improvements, the orphan girls were moved in 1894 from Wheeling Hospital to the Elm Grove facility. Bishop Patrick J. Donahue designated it a separate institution with the name St. Vincent's Home for Girls. At this time in history, there were about 45 girls and 35 boys who were provided care in the two homes. In 1903, the St. John's Home for Boys expanded to serve older aged boys who were housed at Ebert's Farm 
on Big Wheeling Creek. The facility, known as the St. Xavier Manual Training School, was under the supervision of the Xaverian brothers. Here, the boys were taught different trades. The younger boys continued to be in the care of the Sisters of St. Joseph. Cardinal Health Systems is today located on the site of the former Manual Training School. St. Vincent's Home for Girls was destroyed by fire in 1921. The girls were temporarily housed in the old school building directly behind the residence until the completion of a new brick building. Today, that building is known as the Thomas More Center. It is used for various purposes by the diocese. In 1947, under the direction of Bishop John J. Swint, the building behind the girls' home was renovated. Four large classrooms, an auditorium with stage facilities, and a home economics room, as well as a dentist office were completed. Boys and girls in grades 1 through 8 from the home attended the home school. They were instructed by the Sisters of St. Joseph, who also cared for them before and after school. In addition to the quality child care that children received, Care was given to physical education, especially for the boys. Many boys became successful athletes. In 1937, the boys' basketball team was a champion of the grade school league with a record of 24 wins and two losses. In this picture, you see the team with Monsignor Weber, Chancellor of the Diocese. The beloved football coach for many years was Coach Al Zambito, here pictured with the team from 1948. The St. Vincent's and St. John's homes were home to many children. Sometimes entire families of children came to the homes. Here you see one of the families, the nine brothers and sisters of the Campbell family. By 1967, far fewer children were placed in the homes. As numbers decreased dramatically, the boys were moved to the St. Vincent's building occupying a special wing separate from the girls. Shortly after that, the name of the single institution became known as St. Vincent's Home for Girls and St. John's Home for Boys, Incorporated. Under the direction of Bishop Joseph H. Hodges, the management was transferred from the Sisters of St. Joseph to a board of directors with the Bishop of the Diocese of Wheeling Charleston as the chairman of the board, a management structure that remains in existence to this day. Here you see pictured the board of directors for 2006 of the St. John's Home for Children. In 1971, Mr. Lanny Sacco, was the first lay person appointed as the director of the home. During an era of nationwide changes to the delivery of social service, commonly known as deinstitutionalization, the home, under Bishop Hodges, undertook a professional study to evaluate program needs to determine the youth population that would best be served by the home and to determine its future. In 1975, the mission of the St. John's 
St. Vincent's Home for Children was changed to work with children from troubled homes, and the name of the agency was changed to the St. John's Home for Boys. Between 1976 and 1978, three new cottage-style buildings were constructed and furnished. In an effort to make the building more homelike, each cottage was able to house eight children. Renovation of the old St. John's Home for Boys reduced the building to a new one-story structure, which served as a community building. It housed the dining room, tutoring room, life skill room, kitchen, offices, and recreation building. In 1980, Sister Mary Lois Stork, the last of the Sisters of St. Joseph, left the home. This ended a remarkable history of 127 years of direct service to children in need. Few realize the extent of this ministry to thousands of children. The sisters provided every imaginable kind of care for large numbers of girls and boys in the two homes. They were mothers who did endless cooking, washing, ironing, mending, doctoring, nursing, and teaching. Did I say remarkable? The picture here is one of some of the many sisters who spent many, many years at St. John's and St. Vincent's home. They are standing left to right, Sister Mary Alice McMaster, Sister Eulalia Estep, and seated left to right, Sister Mary Charles Murphy, Sister Norberta Myers, and Sister Angelina Cavallero. The sisters continue to play a vital role in our operations by maintaining at least one Sister of St. Joseph on the St. John's Home Board of Directors. This tradition continued for many years and laid the foundation for the St. John's Home for Children that exists today. Through many changes and challenges through the years, this agency evolved into what it is today, but it still remains a home for children in need. On December 11, 1984, the agency was formally reincorporated under the name of St. John's St. Vincent's Home Incorporated. In 1987, the agency, now commonly known as the St. John's Home for Children, remodeled the cottages and reorganized the program to meet the changing needs of youth and their families. In 1989, services were shifted to operating one cottage as an eight-bed residential group home for pre-adolescent boys ages 8 to 14, with family reunification as the ultimate goal. A second cottage was used for administrative offices. The St. John's Home for Children became licensed by the West Virginia Department of Health and Human Resources in January of 1991 as a provider of behavioral health services. Also during this time, through the support of community volunteers, a recreation building was constructed to provide a space for indoor recreation activities that had not existed before. Through the 1990s, the St. John's Home continued to review and revise its program and services to meet the changing needs of children and families, 
and to adapt to a changing environment in the delivery of human services. In 1996, the state of West Virginia created a four-level treatment system with the St. John's Home being recognized as a level two facility that serves youth with emotional or behavioral difficulties or who are victims of abuse and or neglect. The St. John's Home is funded in part under an agreement with the Bureau for Children and Families, West Virginia Department of Health and Human Resources, and by the continued support of the Diocese of Wheeling, Charleston. In 2005, through additional grants and donations, the St. John's Home was again able to renovate its cottages and began renovating the bottom floor of the original administration building to enhance the facility and to provide for increased educational resources for our children. Today, the mission of the St. John's Home for Children embraces a tradition of caring for youth and families. By securing family-focused services through community collaboration in order to promote family well-being. The St. John's Home puts its mission into practice by working collaboratively with many different community resources, including the West Virginia Department of Health and Human Resources, Ohio County Schools, which includes a formal agreement with Elm Grove Elementary School as a partner in education, local hospitals, doctors, dentists, and optometrists, specialized agencies and private therapists, behavioral health professionals. The St. John's Home for Children provides a range of services to youth and families, including assessment, treatment planning, individual, group, and family counseling, behavior management, and life and social skills training. Numerous recreational activities are also conducted with our youth and families to promote good old fun experiences and family cohesion. This includes trips to local parks, sporting events, amusement parks, educational centers, and camping trips. We pay special attention to the values of integrity, community, and the importance of healthy family relationships to help us reach our goals. Children attend local public schools with St. John's home staff providing support to the teachers. Typically, over 85% of our youth are able to attain a grade point average of 2.0 or higher. Also, over 90% of our children successfully return to a family setting, either with their family of origin, a foster family, or an adoptive family. In November of 2004, Bishop Bernard Schmidt and representatives from the Board of Directors and staff of the St. John's Home for Children received national accreditation from the Council on Accreditation. This accreditation signifies that the St. John's Home for Children meets the highest national best practice standards and is delivering the best quality service to the community it serves. The St. John's Home for Children is part of the Council on Accreditation's Community of Excellence, 
that includes more than 1,000 private and public organizations that serves over 6 million children, individuals, and families in the United States and Canada. We are proud to have received this recognition and remain committed to providing quality services well into the next century to continue to improve the lives of children and families. Over the past 150 years, many people now scattered throughout the United States have called the St. Vincent's Home for Girls and St. John's Home for Boys home. Many of our alumni have gone on to lead very successful lives as adults making a significant contribution to our society. Some entered the priesthood. Over a dozen women entered religious life, while others have become doctors, dentists, nurses, elementary and secondary school teachers, college professors, held offices in the state legislature, or held positions in our armed forces and military. Over the years, we have received numerous testimonials from former residents expressing their appreciation and sharing fond memories they cherish from the times when they were part of our home as a child. We have held three reunions for these folks, and in 1999, many of these former residents returned for their third reunion. They are pictured here with Bishop Schmidt. We thank you for taking this journey of 150 years with us. Our hope is that we are able to continue to allow children and their families to come to us. And our prayer is that we always remember that our most precious gift as human beings is our children. God bless you all.